Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and we are back for more of The Medium. This is part three of a full playthrough for the game, and if you have missed part one and two, of course, I would urge you to go and watch those first, as there's a lot of story to this game. It's basically a story game first, and then, you know, a gameplay game second almost, so you do really need to catch up if you haven't seen up to this point. However, if you've been watching, then you'll know that we play as a woman called Marianne. She's investigating this old abandoned hotel. As a medium, she's able to go between two realities, the world of the dead and the world of the living and she's just received the ability to be able to travel through mirrors directly into the other world this sort of nightmare realm and explore it freely now we've also been stalked by a demon in both realities now i think the demon's name is for more kind of like for more from little nightmares but as a demon and also we've sort of found this girl called sadness this little girl with a mask and only one arm and she's sort of been guiding us through the hotel but she keeps disappearing on us we're trying to help her out and recently she disappeared but before she did she told us about a guy called Richard who's meant to be this hollowed doll-like man um, who's been abducting her friends apparently so we're sort of finding out about this creepy character called Richard who we now have to track down and we also are still looking for sadness so let's see where the story goes next guys let's dive into part three pick up where we left off and yeah let's uh, see what happens next in the medium so here we go we've just entered the day room and this is where we left off last time we just had a cutscene, of course with sadness so let's Carry on and see what happens next. I'm gonna jog actually. Oh, we can't go through here. We need to slice it, I think, with our uh, razor blade. So let's do that. Satisfying skin cutting again. <laughs> Sound like a serial killer. Oh, this one's quite hard to cut through actually. You have to wiggle it a little bit more. Oh, there you go. It kind of just gave way suddenly <laughs> and just splits open there. Ugh, and now it's kind of got stuck again. Come on. There we go. Cut through that gristle. It's medium rare, guys. That was great, wasn't it? Richard? Are you there? Ooh, is this where we're going to be running into Richard, I wonder? Uh, that looks kind of weird. Look, there's like a table full of plants, but in the other world, it's like rotten flesh. Pretty nasty. Can I see anything if I hold our sight down? No? Okay. Just keep going there. It looks like we need to get through these moths. So in order to do that, we're going to need spirit energy. Do we have any? No, I currently don't have any. So we're going to have to find some. Maybe I can go through this door. Uh, locked. That's locked. Okay. Can I leave our body to go through it? Yes, we can. Very nice. Ooh, what's that? I think that's just the light. Sitting over here? Seems to be something buried under the rubble there, maybe? But we can't access it. Let's keep looking around, I guess. Ooh, something here as well. What's that? I can't have a locket or something. Let's go back to our body. I wonder if we can do anything with that. We'll have to uh, explore around the room a little bit more, I think. Oh, what's this? A note. Let's read the note. Thomas, I've always been stunned by the depth and complexity of his imagination, mesmerised by the surreal dreamscapes his mind would weave, the way he described them, with every minute detail. It was as if he had actually witnessed all of it, as if something or someone pulled the veil and allowed him to peek beyond the edges of our reality. An angel? A demon? Is there really a difference? I know it didn't matter to me as his visions came alive on my canvas. Some would say I used the boy to fuel my waning creativity, but how could I not? To let this unique perspective, this bottomless well of inspiration go to waste, that would be an unforgivable sin. Hmm, so this is about Thomas. It seems to be written by some artist and they used his imagination, exploited it, to be able to like draw and paint kind of creepy images I imagine. Sheet of music. Well, at least part of it. Right, musical sheets. That'll probably come in handy, I'm imagining, but I don't know how. Oh, what's this? Ah, uh, here's one of the pictures, maybe. Picture of a horse. G 
Gather round, children. I want you to meet Lillianne. She's going to be joining our painting class. Um, why can't I play with my friends, Uncle Richard? Your friends? Oh, Lillianne, I... I promised your father you would spend some time with the other children. Friends? Huh? So that's for Richard that we're seeking. He seemed to be a teacher to her in the daycare. Got another note, so let's read it. I spent a few years trying to steer him in the right direction, trying to make him see the depth of his potential. He kept refusing, claiming that he was no painter and that he saw our little get-togethers as therapy rather than artistic expression. Eventually, I wore him down. He agreed to enter the university, but on the condition that it would be his chosen field. And so he started on his way to becoming an architect. At first I was rather sceptical, thinking he was throwing away greatness for mere competence. But deep inside, I guess I was glad to be the only one to bring his visions to life. And then, he met her. Our painting sessions became few and far between. He no longer needed my help in dealing with his inner demons. So it sounds like Thomas like met the girl of his dreams and we've heard him talking about this woman that he seems to have lost before uh, and this seems to be a note written I'm guessing by Richard who wanted to control Thomas. That's my sort of uh, oh there's something else here another note. Let's have a read this is called a very special boy. I remember when I first met him, working a simple factory job, still more of a boy than a man, wide-eyed, constantly looking over his shoulder like a scared animal. His parents had died in the Warsaw Uprising. Of what he'd gone through in the years that followed, he did not want me to speak, and I never pressed him, but it soon became clear he had no one else in this world. I could immediately tell that, despite his young age, he had seen things that no one his age should. I immediately could tell he was very special. Okay. That's just more kind of adding to uh, what we already presumed there. Let's... Oh, we can't actually access this one. So what are we doing here? What's this? Looks like we've got another piece of a sheet of music now. What about through here? Ooh, we haven't been in this room. There's something here. What is that? Okay, another note, a method to madness. A lot of notes in this episode, a lot of note reading. It became a habit of ours. We'd sit down, sketchbook at ready, and then he'd close his eyes and start talking, describing all of the things that he saw in his mind's eye, the horror and splendor of worlds beyond our own. What started out as an innocent exercise in imagination ultimately became a bottomless well of inspiration. My hand wouldn't dare rest, sketching furiously as he described the indescribable. For a while, I wondered why he was so eager to share his visions with me. To him, they seemed like a burden, a source of great pain and distress, but finally, I understood. He sought to share them with someone who he saw as a source of beauty, rather than madness. There we are. More on Thomas. We've got a globe here. Ah, so I think that sort of cylinder that we picked up earlier, that sort of fragment, can go into this globe here. Yeah, there we go, look, it fits right in. And now we just turn it to assemble what I believe looks like just pieces of a face. Okay, I think we're getting somewhere now, guys. Maybe one more? No, that's wrong. Yay, we did it, finally. That took a little while. That is kind of gross. It's just becoming like living flesh. And show me a way out of here. Yeah, hopefully this now allows us to sort of enter a new place in the spirit realm and get some of that spirit energy to get through the moths. That's what I'm thinking. So we turn the globe. Ah, oh, yeah, look, there we go. We've now got access to the area we need over here. We should be able to pick up a collectible. So it's a sketch by the look of it, another children's sketch. This one's called Taken Away. So we've got Taken Away badness and sadness now but there must be more to this globe than just a sketch it might give us access to something else like this doorway maybe let's try it yes success progress has been made once again um, we've got another room we can enter through here 
I don't think we've been in this room. <gasps> and there is a piano. We can probably use the musical notes here. Maybe we need to combine them first, though. There you go. Oh, we're still missing one piece. Right, let's have a look in this room. Maybe it's uh, here. What's that? I love this melody. It reminds me of my childhood. Or at least the good parts of it. But the bad parts, they're always there, aren't they? You're a very smart girl, Lily. You know that, don't you? You're special. Her voice, is that... Sadness? Yeah, Lily is sadness. We predicted this in the last episode, didn't we? I, well, I said that I thought Lily was sadness, so it seems we were right there. But Richard, I think he's going to be a creep. I think he's going to do something bad. Okay, let's go over here and check this out. A key. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, what's the key for, though? I didn't remember seeing a locked door, though, is the only problem. Oh, yeah, actually, it's this one, isn't it? Of course. So here we go, we can unlock this door now. Head on through. And check this. A pen holder with a missing pen. It's a tear. Come on, Richard. You were always there when I needed you. Let me return the favor. Ah, uh, I don't know, Thomas. What about my work? The university? Richard. I know they kicked you out. I'm guessing you finally managed to piss off the right people. Stay with us, old friend. Do it for me. For them. So, he brought him here. Hmm. Wonder who he meant by them. So, Thomas brought his old sort of tutor and sort of mentor, Richard, into the hotel. I'm guessing this is where bad stuff started to happen. We've got some glasses here, and it looks like they're revealing another memory of from the past, so let's put that back together. See what this one says. So, that's how you found him? Yes. He was just lying there. He, uh... Mr. Reckon? I, I'm sorry. He was a friend. I just... need a moment. That's not true, Thomas. You thought he... Deserved it. Man, this is getting uh, complicated. Alright, let's check out this. Another note. Once he got engaged, we grew apart for a while. Now that I think of it, I guess I was jealous. I no longer had him all for myself. In time, I warmed up to her as well. She was striking, both in her beauty and intellect. Eventually, I accepted the fact that he had found true happiness, true love, strong and pure. Well, as pure as it can be, I guess. In any case, I was no longer needed. When the project came along, the one that would be eventually known as Niwa, I pulled all my strings to get him what he wanted, even though I knew it would drive an even bigger wedge between us. I wanted the best for him. He was the closest to a son that I ever had. Okay, so Richard felt like Thomas was kind of like a son he never had, basically, is what that's saying. That should be all the pieces of the score now. So we should be able to combine these now into one sheet of music. Now we need to uh, head back to the piano and see if we can play that song. We've got a drip here as well. Oh, another conversation. Don't you think he would be better off in a nursing home? What about his family? Richard doesn't have any family. Oh, the poor man. It's like he's somewhere else. We were close once, you know. I mean, not that close, but... All right. I'll take care of him. Hollow like a puppet. Isn't that what sadness said? Hmm. 
Wait, guys, this is all making sense now. Ursula was the woman that seemed to be possessed by some kind of evil. And she, if you remember in the last episode, we saw that vision where she stabbed Richard while he was in the wheelchair. So this is obviously what happened. Richard was the guy in the wheelchair. He obviously did some bad things to people, including potentially this nurse. And she had her vengeance by stabbing him to death when she was possessed by this kind of evil that's in this hotel. So that's Richard's fate. Ursula ended up killing him with the knife while he was sort of like this in this vegetable state, which is why I think he is referred to as being hollow by sadness because he lost his mind, you know, he kind of became um, just sort of mindless in a wheelchair. So it's all kind of coming together. Richard had a dark past and he had a sort of a morbid end as well himself. Right, here we go. See what this uh, piano does when we play it. Apply the music sheets. And now, <gasps> spirit energy. Finally. We have spirit energy, guys. We can now... That music is loud. We can now go back and get rid of all the moths. Okay, now we'll get through these moths. Wow, there's so many of them. I hope I'm going the right way. Oh yeah, look down these stairs. <laughs> kind of got attacked at the end there. There we go, we've made it. On to the next area of the game. Do we get to go outside finally now? This is what's over here? Ooh, a painting. And another conversation. Uncle Richard, my arms are getting tired. You've been drawing me for hours. Almost done. You know, Lily, you remind me of someone. A girl I knew when I was very young. Did you love her? Yes. With a young, innocent love, free of the... ferocity of adult lives. Richard. I'm getting a weird vibe from him. There's grief sorrow and something else and something decidedly unsavory about him uh okay so where to next maybe down here oh there's something over here in the corner another note okay i was finished they had to let me go me richard Tukowski whose works were recognised across the continent, whose imagination, as they said, knew no bounds, whose very name became synonymous with fine art. All of that meant nothing to these soulless bureaucrats. To them, I was just a liability, the source of dangerous liberal ideas. I felt betrayed, empty. I needed to get out, away from the hollow sickness of the city. But most of all, I needed a friend. And so, I sought him out. I knew his wife had died some months earlier. So this is Thomas, his wife had died, He went. Richard went back to him. At the time, I thought it was best to not interfere with his grieving, and so now, I feared that he'd hold it against me, for not being there when he needed me the most. Instead, he offered me a home. Okay, yeah, it is all making sense. Let's go this way now. We need to probably find a way out of this building. See, I think we have to go through here. But it's blocked because of this giant tentacle thing. Wait, I just realised, look at the giant hand outside, guys. You see that in, like, the right of the screen on the bottom? There's, like, this giant hand. That's kind of scary. Uh, we can't seem to do any more of that. Oh, there's something here. A doll. That is creepy. We don't want to see dolls in horror games. We've got another conversation from the doll. Aren't you a bit old to be playing with dolls? Here, I bought it especially for you. Oh, a ribbon? It's beautiful. Thank you, Uncle Richard. Here, let me... Um, on the other hand, why don't you do it yourself? Ah, what was that? It's like something stirred inside it. 
Yeah, he shouldn't be having weird ideas about like putting a ribbon on a kid. Like, if he if you find that weird, then you know you're and you've got a weird thoughts because you've tied a ribbon to a kid, then you're a creep. <laughs> you should it shouldn't be a weird thing. So yeah, uh, Richard definitely I think had some trouble. Here's the ribbon. No, I didn't mean to. Oh, God. What have I done? It feels cold. What have you done? I'm getting bad vibes about this guy, man. Like, I think something really twisted is going to be revealed soon. Uh. Oh, my God. The wheelchair just moved on its by its own accord. Do I investigate? I had never felt anything so desperate. It was calling out to me. It wanted to show me something. <gasps> Ooh, we've been taken into like... <gasps> Is this Thomas? This is going to be like Thomas's backstory, isn't it? Where is it? Where is it? God fucking damn it! So I'm guessing we're getting this because we sat in Richard's wheelchair. It's his. It's like now it's Thomas's memories. I thought I could protect her, idiot. What would you think of me? I failed you. I failed us. It's all falling apart. What? Yes, I know. No, I need to be sure. There's got to be something around here. You want what? So was Thomas a medium as well? Fuck! I think he probably was, wasn't he? Because that's why he was able to see two worlds. He's obviously like Marianne, like he is a medium as well. And he's able to speak to the dead. Look who finally decided to let me out of my cage. Spirit Thomas. And only when you need my help. Surprise. Surprise. Okay, you know what? I'm not in the mood. Just tell me what you see. Come on. Come on. Yes, I can feel it. Okay. It's around here somewhere. Oh, well, that's real fucking specific. Hey, I'm trying to help here. Well, you know, sometimes I wonder. Well, it doesn't make it easier when you keep me in the dark for so long. Oh, Christ. Thanks for that, by the way. <laughs> Hell of a way to treat your soulmate. Damn it! There's nothing here! There is. Really? I'm never wrong about these things. You know that. Well, oh, screw this. I should have known better than to listen to you. Wait. What? There. There. Where? What? You building tension? Grab the fucking thing! Would you shut up? 
I'm confused as to what this is all about. Okay. It's a book by the look of it. But what kind of book? This is him searching oh, Richard's no. room. I think it might be. And he's found, like, Page. his weird book Page. of weird pictures. It's like he's obsessed. What has he... What have I done? Imagine if Lily is, like, Thomas's kid or something. We couldn't have known... I let him into my home. It was like a father to me. How could he do this to her? F fucking bastard! Who could he? I told you we couldn't trust anyone but ourselves. Keep it together. Think. What do we do now? Kick his ass. At the very least, right. and then tell the police. And when he comes back, I'll just... Whoa, 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 easy, Tiger. Remember what's at stake here. Just let me do what I do. This game has taken some dark fast. turns, I'm telling you that. In one episode, it's gone, like, super don't. dark. I will kill him. I think our theory on this is correct, but, you know, I could be misinterpreting events, but I think Rich has basically been drawing inappropriate images of Thomas's daughter, who might well be Lily. Thomas? Yeah, it's Richard, look. I wasn't expecting you. He's, uh... Everything all right, my friend? He had another little book with him as well. Did you do it, friend? Did I? What? My daughter. My 13-year-old daughter. I entrusted her to you. Thomas. Did you do it? I... I don't... That's a yes. I found the sketchbook. Forced myself to look through it. Cover to cover. Every single fucking page! Tell me you didn't hurt her, Richard. Thomas, please. Tell me I'm wrong, Richard. Tell me, and I'll let you go. I... it wasn't me. Thomas, you have to understand. There's this thing inside of me. Shut up. Oh, oh, oh. You, you have to believe me. I wanted to die. I'll make it quick. Thomas, I'm so sorry. She's my daughter! <laughs> I never wanted any of this. I, I, I should never have come here. But you did. No one should see you. Knowing what she means to me. Thomas, I, I swear I'll go away. You'll never. Wait. But you. No. Let me out. Let me out. Let me in! Ah, oh, so this is how Richard actually ended up in a wheelchair. So Thomas basically is infiltrating his mind with his spirit powers. And I believe what's going to happen is he's going to put him into a, like, a coma-like state once he's got the information that he wants. He's basically going to wipe Richard's mind sort of blank as a punishment for like hurting his daughter. Oh. So wait, are we in the overworld, the other world or the nightmare world with uh, Thomas now? 
with his spirit there. This cancer spread far enough. Time to cut it out. All right, Richard. This is your world. Show me what you're hiding. So it seems like we're actually inside Richard's mind now. Like this is inside his toxic predatory head. So when Thomas touched him, he put his spirit version inside Thomas's head to sort of investigate what he's done. So we're probably going to see some pretty disturbing stuff in here. This word started, Richard. Place that broke you. Made you what you are. Look at those hands over there, guys, in the old house. Or is that the hotel, maybe? I think that is the hotel, because we're actually inside of that, seeing that hand as Marianne at the moment. This is so cool. I didn't expect the game to take such a twist. We've got a tentacle up ahead. We have to sneak past that, maybe? <gasps> parry! Right, we're to parry attack. Oh, we can actually attack now. There we go. One tentacle down, many to go. You want a piece too? Oh no, we missed it. Okay, we've got to parry. There you go. Take that, Richard's mind. Let's try this next one. Yes, nice. Not too hard. That one was a bit harder. Let's try again. And go. There we go. Nice. You feel it, Thomas. There's something here. It awoke on that day when she came to it. It took over. Made itself at home. Into the old house. Loss. Hatred. Grief. This place reeks of them. I don't think this is the hotel. Something terrible happened here. It changed Richard forever. No! What the hell? This is Richard's old house as a kid. Leave her alone! His family home. Richard's big, ugly secret. The sum of all his demons. I don't know if we want to see this secret, though. It's caused him to turn into a, such a, like, vile kind of man when he's older. Uh, what have we got over here, sitting on the table? Is it a knife? Yeah, his father's knife. Okay. Richard, your father forgot his knife. You'd better go and bring it to him. All right, I'll play along for now. His voice is funny. It's kind of like a pantomime villain or something. All right, I'll play along for now. Let's go through this door. Ooh, spooky. Father, you forgot your knife. Huh. Thank you, Richard. You know what? Why don't you keep it? But... It's your lucky knife. And now it's yours. You'll need it. I'm leaving tomorrow. What? No! Ooh. This is like the Tower of Terror at Where Disney or something. The army is heading out west. And I'll be going with them. But... No! I don't want you to go! Oh, it keeps getting pushed back. I don't want to go either, son. But sometimes, what we want isn't what's important. Do you understand? I... When will you come back? Take care of your mother, Richard. You're the man of the house now. So his father went away and Richard was sort of upset. We're going deeper into his mind. Something bad is going to happen now, I think. His father went away and something sort of... Well, no one was there to protect Richard, perhaps. Oh, what's that? It's like a burning sort of 
painting over Those here. Tentacles are guarding something. We need to get rid of them. Spirit blast. Hmm. Don't know how we get rid of those. Let's have a look at this note. What was a pipe? By the sweat of your brow. It didn't really give us much information, did it? What about this fireplace? Oh, there's something in the fire. There's something here as well. You shall rise and you shall fall. A medal. Okay. Got a family portrait. Will you return to the earth from which you came? And then there's something in this fire, I think. Let's check the desk again. Um... <gasps> oh, there's something in the drawer. There. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. So I'm guessing this is Richard's mother that died. Oh, what was that? The fire's gone out. We can probably get into the fireplace now. There was an object in there that we couldn't reach before. Let's check it out. There we go. Indeed. It looks like a letter. As government representative of the Polish Republic, I wish to offer my deepest sympathy and regret in regards to the passing of Lieutenant Thaddeus Tarkovsky. He whose loss you mourn died in the noblest of causes. His country will be forever grateful for the sacrifice he made protecting our freedom and independence. And that's from a Minister of Military Affairs. Now, this makes it seem like both um, Richard's mother and father are now dead. Which means Grief. that he was all by himself. Anger. There's a coffin on here now. Kind of weird. Ah, I just took some spirit energy from that. Can I blast this with it now? Hold RT to charge, spirit blast and unleash. Okay. Here we go. And blast. Nice. Wow, that's kind of impressive. And this is even more impressive. We're like inside a photograph now, it seems almost. Oh yeah, we're inside the painting. No way. This is so cool. This is really impressive, this game. Hey, Richard. So we're going to see the origins of Richard and Bet his dark backstory now, I think. What? Kind of pretty in this hey, painting. Wait up. By far the prettiest part of the game so far. Can we just stay here for the rest of the game? <laughs> Stay in this nice happy memory. Come on, Slowpoke. Where'd you go? Can we like track him? Oh, there's something here. Half eaten bit of bread and some milk. Here. I'll try to bring more tomorrow. Thank you, Richard. I can't tell you how much this means to me. So Rose was probably his like childhood sweetheart that he talked about before. His pure and innocent love. I don't know which way we go now. Maybe up here? You're getting awfully close <laughs> to the screen uh, there. <laughs> this way, silly. Oh, here we go. We've got something on these rocks. But... What is it? It's um, something very important. Promise me you'll keep it safe. I wonder what that was. The camera angles are kind of weird though in this section, I'll say that much. Like, I'm kind of running right into the screen and it's kind of glitching up against the camera. It's a bit weird. I'll go up this way this time and then we'll take the upper path. Rose? Anyone there? <laughs> Over here! We better not get jump scared because it's very calm at the moment. There you are! I was afraid you'd get lost in there. Me? Ooh, that is pretty. I've been waiting here for ages. I was starting to get bored waiting for you. Hey! 
Man, the visuals in this okay. game are so nice. Wow, Did okay. You see that? <laughs> and as I said that, it changes and becomes really creepy. It's a big one. We should probably go. Same spot tomorrow? I'll be there. Oh no. Something creepy was just like catching up with us then. It was like a monster or something. Cute, Richard. Real cute. So, where do we go from here? So we kind of just got into that painting and experienced um, some of his backstory where he knew a girl called Rose. At the end, it's, they were saying, like, oh, a storm's coming. And this storm started brewing and then this sort of monstrous sound started up. So something bad obviously happened in that area. Um, okay, what do we do then? All right, let's head on back into the main room and see if anything's changed. Can we go up the staircase now on the other side? Mom, who is he? He's he's someone who can take care of us. But I can take care of you. I promised Dad I'd protect you. I know, honey. And he would be so proud of you. But sometimes, a brave heart is just not enough. So she lets somebody into their home. I'm guessing it did something to Richard. It's probably like a vicious cycle. He might have normalized his own behavior in his mind. Hey, come here. I need you to do something for me. I need you to bring me that thing. You know which one. Yeah, real specific. So there's like a belt and a chair. We need to put something on the chair. We're gonna like set up a crime scene here, basically. We see anything on here? Oh, there's a book. A skin-bound book. Very Hellraiser-like. Um, so we have the book. Do we need to put the book on the chair? Let's try it. Oh, what? You want a bedtime story? I'm not your goddamn mother. Okay, well, it's not the book. But at least we learned how much of a dick that guy is. <laughs> Alright, what about... We've got a beer bottle or a picture. What's the picture all about? A wedding photo. It's not going to be anything to do with a wedding photo, I don't think. But we'll put it down there just to see what he says. Why the hell would I want that? I miss your daddy. Well, he ain't here. Real fucking charmer, that one. Hmm. We could put the beer bottle down. Could be that. Because obviously he might have been a heavy drink of this guy and he might have just beaten Thomas, uh, sorry, Richards quite a lot as a boy. Oh, you little shit. I'll teach you some respect. Damn. We have to hit that uh, tentacle thing. Ah! What the hell did you do to me? Again. Ungrateful little fuck! Get the hell away from me! Gladly. So he cut him with his father's knife. Good, because that stepdad was horrible. Although I'm not condoning anybody ever do that. <laughs> Just to make it clear. Alright, we've got spirit energy. Take that, tentacle. Once you got it down, it's not too bad that Let carrying. Oh my god, what happened to his no! mother? Oh, 
Doesn't look good. Back into another painting now. This place again. But not the same time. This time it looks really kind of creepy. It's full of mist. Richard. It's overcast. This is kind of like Resident Evil now. It reminds me of the Resident Evil remake and the environments in that game. Is this his mother or is this this is probably Rose? I should be going. I'm sorry. It's all right, Rose. We can finish some other time. So Richard liked to draw pictures of Rose as uh, when they were kids together. He was always a good illustrator. Richard, where are you? H Hello? Do you go up here? Richard, come out! Oh, sitting here on this rock. Don't worry. I'll keep you safe. I'll keep you safe. That looks like it was his father's, like, dog tag or medal or something. From the war. Let's keep exploring, I suppose. This isn't funny. I'm completely lost now. I have no idea which way I've gone. Richard! Can't go that way. There you are. Oh, hey. I waited for you by the maze. I was afraid something happened to you. I'm fine. I don't like being alone. We're approaching that creepy area again. Are you sure you're alright? I said I'm fine! Hey, if something happened, you can tell me. Just let me... Get the hell away from me! I'm not entirely sure what's gone on. Okay, Richard. I get the picture doesn't change a goddamn thing. Basically, it seems like Richard lost his father. I thought he lost his father and his mother, but he just lost his father to begin with. Then had this weird stepdad who used to like beat him and do God knows what to him. And then his mother ended up getting killed, I imagine by the stepdad when he was in a fit of rage and Richard couldn't protect her. And that obviously changed him. I don't know if something bad happened to Rose then after that as well. But obviously Richard did have violent tendencies because he slashed his stepdad back with a knife. So I just don't know anymore. Mommy, what's going on? Shh, shh, listen to me, Richard. Listen to my every word. Some men will come to our house tonight. But why? What do they want? Shh, it's okay. I told them to come. Oh my god, wait, did his mother... Did Richard kill his mother because she invited guys to no. the house to do something weird? Just stay away from me! Just stay back! What is going on? Get away from me, you bastards! No! No! <gasps> Let go of me! No, please don't! I had it wrong. Richard's stepdad did not kill the mother. Richard's stepdad beat the mother, I think, and Richard, but I think then he, her, the mother invited some guys to the house to, like, get her revenge on the stepdad, and they did something really bad to him. Man, this game keeps, like, tricking me with what I, with my assumptions and stuff. Any son of Poland who collaborates with the oppressor. Ah, oh, so she said he was a collaborator and basically dobbed him into, like, the nationalists, I believe, in Poland. Uh, who steals from, uh, denounces or 
otherwise act against his compatriots. First house on the left, right next to the river, with the old cherry tree in front. They're hiding them in the pantry under the floorboards. They let them out sometimes to stretch out, usually later in the day. Some of them even go out sometimes, probably looking for food. Best to come at night. So were they housing people they shouldn't be in the home? Okay. Guessing this was during the wartime. Commits an unforgivable crime against the motherland. Oh, oh they hung him. Swiftly punish. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. So we'll take his spirit energy from where he was hung in the noose and then blast this picture and hopefully get the last piece of a puzzle. Back into the painting once more, one final time. This is getting tedious. Rose, where are you? I'm sorry. Oh, messed that one up. Come on. There we are. Oh man, I keep messing them up. There we go. Okay, what's this? The bread's gone, the milk's drank. Destroy that tentacle and go on. Through here. Please. Oh, this is creepy. I can hear something up ahead. What's this? So I think Rose was being hidden in the house, like as a fugitive, one of these fugitive families during the wartime perhaps, and then Richard's mother used the knowledge that this family was being kept sort of hidden to set the stepfather up so he would take the fall and be hung by these sort of nationalists. And then of course they killed Rose and her family as well, so Richard like lost his childhood love. He basically had already lost his father, been abused by his stepdad, and then obviously something bad happened to his mother as well, so he'd lost everything at this point pretty much. They took her from me! Unless I've got that kind of wrong, but that's kind of my interpretation of events. You took her from me! Yeah, look, we can hear that he's blaming his mother for Rose's death because she invited those men around to deal with the stepfather and, of course, inadvertently led to, like, Rose's death. And look, there's a picture here scribbled out, and this seems to be of his mother, a picture that Richard's drawn of his mother, perhaps scribbled it all out because he hates her now. Maybe Richard ended up killing his mother as well, like, in a fit of vengeance or something? I don't know for sure, but, like, I have all these, like, ideas in my head of where the story's going now. I think that kind of fits together, right, guys? No, I help nothing. Perhaps up through here now. More tentacles. We're obviously going the right way, we've got more tentacles up here. I want to get this tentacle. There you go. Because they're kind of annoying me at this point. Right, we found our way to that weird place again. We've got some giant creature now. What the heck is that? Is 
They leave. Yeah, he was creeping on his daughter, wasn't he? Child eater, that thing's called. What the heck? It's that giant creature's called the child eater. A fitting name. Alright, let's try going through the door then, I guess. I love those powers. I wish I had those kind of powers. Just open doors with my fiery will. Are we going to have to defeat this? Imagine we get a boss battle now. It feels like the kind of game we wouldn't have a, bo a boss battle, but imagine if we actually have to fight this thing. Wow, that is a big daddy right there. <laughs> he is huge. Oh my goodness, okay. That's pretty horrifying. We freed Richard, who is trapped by the child eater. Help! Somebody! Please, help! Over here, kid. Please, mister, I need help. The monster, it's after me. Monster, you say? And what does this... Monster look like. Sir, there's no time. Whoa. Hurry, we have to get out of here. It's okay, Richard. Why don't you take a moment to catch your breath? Do I know you, mister? Are you one of my stepfather's friends? No, kid. <gasps> I'm not planning on making any friends here. I'm here just for you. No, what? No! Don't come any closer! Don't touch me! I'm sorry, kid. I know you tried to run, to hide. Get your hands off me! But as long as you're here, the beast will always find you. Richard. He's wiping his mind, isn't he? So he can't actually, like, hurt any more kids in the real world. And that's how he ended up in a wheelchair, but that's Richard's past. It was pretty overwhelming at first. Thomas being like me, but different somehow. I guess I don't have to tell you. <gasps> so is she gonna get consumed by the child eater now? Because it's kind of creeping up on her. I would get out of that wheelchair, like, Thomas? pronto. Who the hell are you? Weird. <laughs> I've got tentacles all wrapped around him. You're him. Richard. I am what's left of him. The bleeding wound. The sand drying on the stump. All because of her. Do I know you, Jillian? You smell just like her. Like the girl who suffered because of you? The one you preyed upon? She came to me because she had nowhere else to go. Where was her father then? Where were you? Oh, shut up! Stop acting like you ever cared about her! She was the light of my life, the warmth of my soul. Your soul has brought it away. There's barely anything left. No, it's just your sins. I almost 
always feel sorry for you. You're nothing. You ripped me apart. You burned me down and left me in the dark. It's a fiend. A monster. I think you're the monster. <laughs> I don't think Thomas is the one that you should be blaming. This man. Thomas. <laughs> what is he? It's the one who butchers the soul. The one who breaks it. But you. Yes. I know you. You can set me free. Screw I that. I'm not setting you free, Please. man. Do it. You don't deserve it. You deserve nothing. I'll be like, yeah, nothing. sure, I'll free you. Just let me go first, and then I'll just run. Then give it to me, please. Do not exist. That's all I Oh, want. kill him. Yeah, sure. Blast his ass. Do you think she'll ever forgive me? Will you? I'm not your judge. I'm just the fairy man. Be gone. Richard. So we've cleansed the place of Richard's aura, so to speak. We've sort of given him the death that he wished. Because, of course, as a medium, we can take the spirit from the other world, make it go over to the spirit realm and rest in peace. This time, it wasn't just a feeling. It was a memory. Had I been here before? Was I a part of the puzzle? This man, Thomas, was he a part of my own past? They might be related in some way. Because they are both mediums. I wonder if they'll have like a battle at the end between the two of them with the superpowers. That'd be kind of cool. And then something clicked. That girl. It's me. But it looks like it was taken here. At Neva. Oh, shit. So she's involved in all of this. Marianne is part of this story. And that's, what's, that's why she's been invited back into it. The Red House. Whatever it is... I can feel it out there, like it's calling out to me. There, in the woods. So we're gonna get to go outside next by the look of it. Make your way through the forest, there you go. Free Richard from his demons done. And now we're back out in the forest, we've now done the hotel, and we will continue in part four, guys, because I've been recording for nearly an hour and 20 minutes now. Uh, I will be cutting this video down a little bit into a roughly an hour long, but still, that is quite enough for one episode, I think. So I hope you have enjoyed part three. This episode was far darker than previous episodes. It dealt with some very distressing themes, so obviously I hope you guys were okay with that, but I think the game touched on them quite sort of respectfully, and it, it wasn't too graphic, but it's still kind of disturbing, you know. Uh, with that said, guys, I have been enjoying the medium a great deal. I think we've probably now at least got to the halfway point of the game, if not further, um, and I will keep playing it for however long it takes us to beat it basically so look forward to another episode in a couple of days time with that said if you did enjoy today's episode remember to leave a like comment down below and of course subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one and i will see you all on the next one